Well, I thought I'd take a minute to uh, lay up one of these wheel pants for you on camera. First off, <coughs> it's waxed with 100% Carnuba wax. Then I'm using Pardol in the mold. That's a release agent. It's polyvinyl alcohol. You can use any resin that you want. Uh, Z epoxy uh, <coughs> polyester resin. I'm using uh, Easy Lamb. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to paint the mold with a coat of resin. Get it all over the mold real nice. I took the uh, liberty of cutting all the fiberglass and the carbon off camera because it just would eat up too much space. <clears throat> so the first piece that goes in is the half ounce cloth and the reason for that is it has a nice tight weave and gives you a nice finish. I've made several of these already and uh, I've been experimenting and it, it's you know, it's just trial and error. Force the resin down into the glass. It doesn't matter that you're if you have a whole lot of resin on it because the um, breather cloth we're going to add on here absorbs all the resin when I when I bag it. So I could use an ounce or two ounces, and it would all come out of there. They're all smoothed out real nice. And what I've been doing is I've been using carbon veil. Just I like the looks of it. I I'm not sure that it would add any strength or it does add any strength, but <clears throat> the next layer is a two tenths carbon veil. I'm gonna force that down in it. This is a true composite wheel pant. I've, I've seen a lot of wheel pants in hobby shops and there are normally just two layers of fiberglass and I don't know, not very strong. Th these are really light because we're bagging all the resin out of it. When I say light, they're uh, about seven grams a side or a half ounce of pet. Uh, per side, per wheel pant. That's not too bad. I mean, I could make them lighter, but then they're flimsy. So I got that all uh, worked down in there. Then I'm going to use a three ounce piece of glass. Push it down in real nice. I should be wearing gloves, but I'm not. I forgot to put them on. Matter of fact, I'll probably get some gloves on because I'm going to force that down in there when I put the breather on there and the uh, peel fly. Force that down in real good. Make sure the, the, the glass gets good and saturated. You can tell by looking at it. Um, if the, if the resin is forced through the fibers. Then I add another piece of carbon veil. Kind of darken the, the uh, finished product up. Could do one layer, but it looks better with the two. And like I said, I don't, I don't know whether it's adding any strength, this carbon veil. It just makes the wheel pant look better, I think. They still, you know, they have to be primed and anyway, when after you join them in the center. So we're going to get some resin up on the fold here so that when I bag it up, it all lays down real good. Then I have a small piece of fiberglass somewhere. Yeah, we'll cut a new.
new piece of tape. It's a piece of fiberglass tape and I use that as a reinforcing where the axle goes through. It's just a one inch square. Approximate where the axle is going to go through the wheel pant and put one of those in there. Then I'm going to put three quarter ounce. Yeah, there's my piece so we'll have two pieces in there. This is not a, a, a hard thing to do, it's just uh, getting the setup, getting the molds made, that's what took all the time. It doesn't take long to lay these up. Now three quarter ounce glass. Let me get the gloves, because I'm going to push this down in there. You got plenty of working time with this resin. You got an hour, I think, as a thought life. And we're going to speed it up with a light bulb when I get it bagged up. Force it down in there real good. So we have five layers. Three quarter. Two layers of two tenths carbon veil, three ounce cloth, and half ounce cloth. And it's sandwiched between every other layer. Get it all forced down in real good. Now comes the peel ply. The peel ply is a nylon type fiber that the resin won't stick to and it allows the, the resin to seep through because there'd be no way to to get it out of the mold if it was just stuck down in there. This is the peel fly and you force it down in and this is you smooth it out real nice and you can probably see that it's kind of more taking the shape with the peel fly on there now I, the first ones I did I only used one layer of breather cloth and the breather cloth is the cloth that absorbs the resin and when I get my carbon woven carbon I'm going to do infusion molding and I'll show how that's done too this is just bagging here force it down in real good next comes two layers of peel or of breather cloth And you force that down in there and then fold it back. This doesn't have to be real good. Force this down in there. And this is what soaks up all the resin. Then we're going to put it in the bag. I already made the bag up off camera. It has a fitting on it. I mixed up a little bit too much resin, but that's the way it goes. Okay, then we got the uh, the bag locks, and it's pretty simple. You just put the put the plastic rod down over it. It's got a U-shaped channel, and you lock it. I learned this all off YouTube. There's about a gazillion, a gazillion uh, videos on YouTube on how to bag and mold. And like I say, the uh, the hardest thing was making the mold itself. That took six hours. And that doesn't include dry time. <laughs> so 
now we're going to center it up in the in the bag, flatten it out, make sure the bag's locked. I got my Harbor Freight vacuum pump. It's only two and a half CFM, but it's funny for what we're doing. Turn it on, press it down, lock it off. That's it. You can already see that the resin is coming up through the bleeder. And let her cure. I'm going to put it under a heat lamp. It's not really a heat lamp. It's just a 100 watt bulb, but you get the idea. And that's all there is. See you on the next video.